I think these eight minutes are just very interesting. First of all, I mean, we got to comment on what the what what the guy's wearing, what he looks like. He has a Gucci, uh, 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 I Saint Laurent um, bag in the back. It it glows and goes back and forth. He's a very interesting looking guy, right? Perfect for the internet, stands out, very interesting. Let's see what he talks about now. Just to give you guys an idea of the scale of what we're dealing with here. You know, Hex, uh, when I invented it about two and a half years ago, the price of Hex went up 10,000 X in 623 days before staking profit. Uh, with staking, you would have been up 20,000 X, 25,000 X. And we've outperformed both Bitcoin and Ethereum from their launch dates, when their performance was the best, when Satoshi owned all the coins, uh, we're outperforming them massively still to this day. Okay, so let's just take that. So he's saying that we're going to 10,000x. Now, right now, we are at 0.0008. We, we actually dropped a little bit. But if you then multiply 10,000x against that, 0.0008, that's eight dollars. That's eight dollars. So he's expecting this thing to go to eight dollars. That would mean my three million hex is worth twenty-four million dollars. Now let's just continue watching. Uh, with a hundred percent perfect flawless operation and uptime for years now. That was my first project, the first time deposit on the blockchain, where you instead of paying uh, miners to uh, destroy the environment by paying them block rewards, uh, you pay. Uh, the inflation to stakers to hold the price up instead of to cause the environment to get wrecked. 20% wrecked, 80% is renewable, but 20% is not. So that was Hex. And Hex was awesome. And then uh, the fees in Ethereum kept going up, kept going up, kept going up. Now the fees in Ethereum are too high. Sometimes it costs $300, $1,000 to do a Uniswap swap. Sometimes it costs uh, 20 to $50 to send an ERC-20. It's not okay. And the only way to solve that is to build new capacity. So if you've got a finite resource and you've got demand and the price is too high, you can either increase the supply, which is what we're doing, or you can decrease demand, which no one's interested in decreasing demand, right? So <clears throat> there's been a lot. So let's, so let's just understand that. So he's absolutely right that, you know, the adoption rate has now slowed. We've seen NFT projects that have uh, decided not to launch, that they're waiting, they're holding off, probably waiting for Ethereum 2.0. Uh, you know, the Ethereum network is so congested, it costs a lot to, the gas is just very, very hot, right? Lorraine, what, what are you thinking so far? Well, first of all, like, um, the, 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 the first thing he created was what, the hex? So, so basically, he's trying to create um, something similar to Ethereum just to kind of lower the, 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 the what, where, where it's going right now is like trying to, from Hex, creating like a, a different blockchain somehow just to mimic the Ethereum blockchain with lower fees, I'm assuming. Right. Right. So he's, so what he's basically saying, and he's going to get into this in a second, is that he's basically duplicating the Ethereum blockchain, fixing all the problems that they had by making it proof of stake instead of proof of work automatically. So the problem with Ethereum right now is that it's proof of work which means all of these uh, computers are processing these mathematical equations that are then gaining the coins. Where And, and that gets very expensive because it costs money to have the, uh, have the computers, have the processing, uh, the electricity for all of that. And that's, what's, that's the big problem with Bitcoin, right? Okay, so let's continue. A lot of Ethereum forks. The problem with all these forks is that uh, they don't give you free coins and they require everybody to use a bridge and we see bridge getting hacked left and right. So the wormhole bridge on Solana got hacked for $300 million a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago. The uh, Another bridge for some NFT platform just got hacked yesterday or the day before for $600 million. And the Polygon bridge uh, was at risk of losing some billions of dollars, except they discovered it before the hackers did. 
And so all those systems are not as intelligently designed as Pulse Chain. Because in Pulse Chain, because you're getting a copy of every single coin that you have on the Ethereum network on this chain. No, wait, let's just, before he goes into that, so we just talked about the Ronin hack. That hack is the bridge. So Axie Infinity didn't get hacked. Ethereum didn't get hacked. It's the bridge between the two. So in other words, when you think about blockchains, if everything is on the Ethereum blockchain, Axie Infinity is a side chain to the Ethereum blockchain, and that requires a bridge. Polygon is a side chain to the Ethereum blockchain that requires a bridge. When you want to buy something in Polygon, you have to switch your Ethereum over to Polygon. That's the bridge. So let's just, so, I mean, it's amazing that, you know, yes, he's absolutely right. These are the big problems. And to access those coins, you can access them right now as we speak. And the test has been working fine for months. You just change one setting in your MetaMask. It points to your MetaMask to the new network and all your coins are already sitting there waiting for you. You just add them one by one. So, and then this reduces the reliance on these risky bridges because you don't need to bridge from one network in. You can just use your native coins on the native network. It's more secure. It's also better designed than Ethereum 2.0. We've seen over $100 million lost from Ethereum 2.0, which doesn't even really exist yet because it only incentivizes people to centralize. So in Ethereum 2.0, you can't become a miner unless you have 32 Ethereum which costs about $100,000. You don't have $100,000, you're going to give your keys to somebody else, and then they're going to lose your money, steal your money, and it's the exact opposite of what cryptocurrency was invented. Cryptocurrency was invented to remove counterparty risk, to put people in charge of their own financial future, to give people their own self-sovereignty, to make things more efficient, faster, cleaner. And so even Ethereum 2.0 isn't as well designed as Pulse Chain. And it doesn't run as on battle-tested, tried-and-true software where the bugs have already been ironed out over years. So Pulse Chain, I believe, will launch more secure than Ethereum 2.0. Already has higher throughput with three-second blocks instead of 13-second blocks. Um, and you can raise the gas limits higher as well. And you don't blow up the environment because you're not paying for proof of work. It's all proof of stake. And you have delegated stake so that you can hold your own keys and delegate your stake to another validator and not have to worry about having a hundred grand to participate in the network. It's a better. Okay. So that that's, a, there's a lot to unpack there, right? So what he's basically saying is pulse chain is going to be better because there aren't going to be any bridges. I don't really understand how he's able to make that claim because at some point, if he wants to grow this blockchain, then he's not then then he has to kind of let in all of these other dapps right these development apps and so those are going to want to be bridges um it's an interesting do you see do you see the uh do you see the bag in the background yeah and then you see this you see this uh this uh, i didn't even see it before but now it's big enough for me to see there's like an airplane but it's all I've Saint Laurent um, X's and O's, Louis uh, you know. Mm. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just a whole. Better design. Go ahead. Character. He's uh, yeah, he seems really convinced by what he's saying. He's probably offering something really great. Uh, but I've from what I've heard and what I've what you sent me is just there's still a lot of questions uh, about this whole this whole thing. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people have a problem with where he originally made his money. So do you remember like, you know, it, you know, probably even before you got on the internet, you used to go to a website and you'd get hit with all of these ridiculous pop-ups, you yeah. know, um, you know, sex drive pop-ups and weight loss pop-ups and all these ridiculous things. That was all him. He did all that kind of marketing. And so he made all those monies on what he calls direct market kind of pop-up ads. Uh, so it, it, he's a little bit fishy. It's a little bit scammy, right? He also kind of looks, you know, like a guy who is pocketing other people's money. System, a more intelligently designed system, and it works today. And you can go test it on testnet now. Go check the parameters out at pulsechain.com. And so what coins will you be getting free copies of? All of them. 
all the coins. You got Hex, you're going to get free copies of Hex. You got Ethereum, you're going to get free copies of Ethereum, but you're going to be diluted 1.2 million X. So unlike uh, other forks like Bitcoin Cash, where people just murdered the price all day long by selling all their free coins all the time, uh, we won't have that problem in Pulse Chain because the Ethereum holders that are getting free uh, Pulse are being diluted 1.2 million fold. The ERC-20s aren't. So if you've got a hex, you're getting a hex, and there's no increase in supply. If you've got a uni, you're getting a uni. If you've got a one inch, you're getting a one inch. If you've got a, a NFT, same exact code, pulls over. Now, there's some exceptions here, right? So fake DeFi, things that have admin keys, like stable coins, or maybe you could even consider NFTs. Depends on what you consider authoritative to whether you own an NFT or not. Is it that some guy's centralized server says you do, or is it that the blockchain says you so, you know, in the case of uh, stable coins, you're not going to be able to redeem them for dollars, maybe unless they're algorithmic, um, but like it, they're definitely going to have different parameters at launch. And then they've got admin keys that they can validate all the coins that they want. They might not do that because they probably wouldn't want all their users suing them for just jacking all their users' free money that they got. So who knows how that's going to play out. And so for real DeFi, really truly decentralized things like Hex, it's the same exact code. And, you know, there's no middlemen, there's no counterparty risk, there's no oracles, and there's no admin keys. It's beautiful and wonderful. And you're going to, I mean, never in the history of man have uh, 10,000 new coins just been, 10,000 new coins and probably 10,000 new trading pairs are just issued into existence for free to everybody. And now the question is, how do you get people? Wait, so, so, so wait a second. So what he's basically saying, Florian, is if you have 500 Ethereum in your wallet, when you come over to Pulse Chain and everybody comes over to Pulse Chain, they're automatically going to get their Ethereum, your 500 Ethereum that was in your wallet under the Ethereum blockchain is now going to be duplicated in Pulse X. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand. If this, see, this is one of those things where you, you, you say to yourself, okay, this guy is in the top 2% of intelligence. He's super smart. He's in Mensa. He, he's just, you know, started reading at three years old, which I guess is early. Um, you know, super, super, super smart. Maybe there's something that he knows that I don't understand. But how is it, if this was really... If this was really something that was going to happen, how is Vitalik Buterin not getting on the phone with him and saying, you're not duplicating Ethereum. You, you, there's no way you're going to duplicate the Ethereum coins. Tezos getting on the phone with them and saying, you're not going to duplicate my Tezos coins. It, it, it sounds sketchy, right? Well, for me, it doesn't make sense. How can you duplicate a coin? Um like on, on one of the other uh, link you sent me and I watched, uh, they were saying people that when you get the duplicate coin, this it, it would it would not be Ethereum, it would be like maybe P Ethereum, P Tesos, P whatever. But I, I just for me it's just like I don't really understand to be honest. I don't want to talk about it because I don't really understand where that's going, how he couldn't make that happen, and what would be the use of that that duplicate coin. Yeah, it, it sounds like a fantasy. It sounds like a scam. People to back the value of these new coins so that you reduce the load in the Ethereum network to lower the Ethereum fees to make everyone happier and have people participating on this network with higher throughput, lower fees, less destruction of the environment, basically no destruction of the environment. Well, you incentivize it. And so uh, over a billion dollars was raised uh, for freedom of speech. And those people that sacrificed were given Free pulse chain tokens. It also generated twenty-seven million dollars of real cash in the bank for five hundred one c three registered charity that does medical research. And then Pulse X also raised some billions. And <clears throat> Pulse X is a Uniswap fork that does twenty-two percent of the fees get burnt. There's no inflation, only deflation. Same in Pulse Chain. In Pulse Chain, twenty-five percent of the fees get burnt. There's no inflation, only deflation. Hey, Bitcoin guys, you like the whole inflation goes down all the time thing? Well, you'll really love the no inflation, the coins burn thing even more if that's your model of what creates a value and appreciation. So 22% of the fees get burned in Pulse X, deflation only, no inflation. 25% of the fees get burned in Pulse Chain, no inflation, only deflation. World's largest free airdrop 
better designed than Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0, uses primarily Ethereum code. Um, you know, the majority of the code that had to be written uh, was getting the system states to, to match up and to change the proof of work validation and the slashing, and the, you know, those components. So, so much to unwrap in this. There's so much to unwrap, you know, because here's the big question. If this is so revolutionary, why, why, why aren't the influencers that you and I follow, the, the DeFi protocols that, that we listen to, all this stuff, why aren't they talking about this? Why isn't this now like, why isn't this in the news? Why isn't this like the biggest thing that's going to happen? If this is really going to basically be Ethereum 2.0 before Ethereum 2.0, then why isn't, why did I have to go down a YouTube funnel to find out about Pulse Chain and like, why isn't everybody in blockchain know about it? It just sounds super sketchy, super sketchy. Yeah, I uh, just want to go to the end and see what's going on because okay, okay. I'm just completely lost right now. So what do we got? We got Hex.com, world's first time deposit, did over a million percent returns in 623 days, 100% perfect flawless operation. Uh, it was given away for free to Bitcoiners and to tell you how many free coins they got, those coins that they received for free today after a 60% drop are worth $500 million. That's how big the scale is that we're talking. So Pulse Chain and Pulse X both generated uh, excess of billions of dollars of sacrifices. Uh, Hex.com gave $500 million worth of free Hex to Bitcoin holders exclusively. And, uh, you know, for fun, I, I bought the world's biggest diamond. <laughs> so I've got a 555 carat, a 555.55 carat diamond used to be called the Enigma. Now it's called the Hex.com Space Diamond. And uh, it matches up with the maximum stake length that you can have in Hex, which is 5,555 days. And so a lot of people will get tattoos on their body of 5555 called the Quattro Cinco Club. And uh, I don't know, I've got like $7 million of watches now and a few Ferraris, a couple Ferraris. Uh, one of them's a thousand horsepower. So just flexing because people care about this stuff. You know, uh, maybe you like $40,000 uh, Louis Vuitton airplane bags, whatever you like, we have it here for you guys. You like uptime, you like decentralization, you like faster, cheaper, world's largest airdrop. We got it all. And then if you like free self-help books, you know, I got 200,000 followers on Twitter, twitter.com slash Richard I called the top Bitcoin top on the day 11 months ago. Who else called the top on the day? Nobody. I called the top on the day and it's been in profit every single day except one. It's a little tiny day where it made a little Judas candle, got everybody long, a fake breakout, and then went straight down. I dropped 55% after that little fake out candle. What else? Yeah, called the tops in the day for free, free uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Richard Hart, you name it. Uh, we're just living the dream out here, you know? So that's, uh, <laughs> that's Richard Hart. Uh, <laughs> A lot of flexing um, needs to tell us that he bought the world's biggest diamond needs to tell us that he has a $40,000 uh, Louis Vuitton bag that's shaped as an airplane um, wearing a giant uh, hex pendant uh, that's probably worth probably several tens of thousands of dollars. Um, what do you think? Do you, uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you the question this way. Do you think that I made a good investment and you didn't invest in something that maybe you should have? Or do you think that you're happy that you missed this one and you're gonna see what happens? Well, I didn't miss it because if I really want to, I could still maybe invest in it. Um, well, not, not during, the sacrifice is over, the sacrifice uh, days. Yeah, but that's, uh, I still don't understand what the sacrifice is, what it, it does and then where the money went. That's my question. A lot of people don't know where the money went. He's flexing. I don't know. He's saying how he's ma he made his money. Maybe he used that money. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of things that don't really make sense to me. Um, how can you duplicate the coin? Uh, why, why other big uh, founder of coins like didn't think about this before? Uh, yeah, I just, when we saw last year about like the crazy APY of some coins and they tell you, oh, if you invest now, like there's like, I don't know, I'm a million APY or whatever. For me, it's kind of the same. I don't, when I don't feel comfortable with it, uh, when I don't have all the information, yes, you can try it if you're willing to lose it. 
Um, but it's something I just, I will probably pass because there's too many unknown, uh, especially the founder doesn't really like, makes me want to like, it doesn't make me want to invest in, 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 in what he's building because the people that are flexing like that are not the people that like I look up to. Uh, and it's still like a lot of like unknown questions, especially for the sacrifice part. I don't really know what it means. I don't really know what's used for and then where the money went. And there, yeah. there, was, a lot, there was a lot of money, to, total money that was sacrificed, like almost like a billion. Um, so it's, yeah, I don't know. For me, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. Yeah, uh, you know, and this was during a time, you, you know, we were talking about this. This was during a time when I was putting, you know, $300 into various DeFi protocols to see whether or not they were going to be successful. And so far, all of those DeFi protocols have failed. I've lost about $1,000 in investing between Metaverse Pro and Jade Protocol and Soldier Nodes and all those different things, thinking that, you know, the APY was, you know, tens of thousands percent, you know, skyrocketing at the time. Uh, and then I got into this, put the $300 into this, got the 3 million coins. I realized that when you asked me, had, how did I, because we're going to talk about this in a second, about the, the free pulse.io, you would ask me, how did I get the, the 39,000 free pulse? And I realized that I had only actually gotten 7,500 uh, through free pulse.io. I actually got 10,000. But then I played some of the games and I lost and things like that. And I pulled my money out um, with 7,000, but I already had 29,000 in there. And I think that that was through the, um, through the sacrifice was that I not only got the 3 million of Pulse X, but I also got this other Pulse coin, 30,000 30, Pulse coin. We'll see. I mean, you know, you know, there's... There's a, I'm going to, I'm going to date myself at this point, you know, this idea of like, um, uh, you've probably never seen uh, Sweeney Todd, but there's a character in it who comes to town, same as like um, Oklahoma or something like that. One of these characters comes to town, they're selling this uh, great product and it's all a scam and they come in, they grab their money and they leave town. And, uh, you know, the question really is, is, is this a scam? Did I lose $300? Now, what's interesting is, you know, so this has been, this topic of conversation has been our absolute number one most successful topic in anything that we've talked about. We've gotten hundreds of views, you know, dozens of likes on this topic. And one of the comments that has come in was, oh, you only invested $300. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not like big bucks here. I'm not going to throw around thousands of dollars. But there are people that have invested their life savings into some of these DeFi protocols like this. And I'm worried for them. I'm not worried that I'm going to lose my $300. I don't, I don't give a shit about the $300. But People who like invested thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. I mean, that's how this free pulse IO is working is that some of these top guys who put in now what they did was they had all of this hex that they had. So they've already made millions on hex and they had all this stuff. They converted that hex into during the sacrifice. Hex was the number one token that was put into exchange for Pulse, Pulse X. And that really, you know, that's how this free pulse work. 